Hello everyone, in this week's EV3 tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to calibrate your gyro sensor to make it more accurate. Anyone who has had experience with the EV3 gyro knows that sometimes it's not as reliable or accurate as we'd like it to be. And the reasoning for this I've explained in a past video about a year ago, and I go into the details of how the gyro sensor works to give you your angle output. However, there are many things that we can be doing to make a gyro sensor, like the LEGO gyro, more accurate. And that's what I'm going to be discussing in this video today. And of course, this video will be especially useful for FLL teams who want to use the EV3 gyro for their FLL robot. Because of course, in a competition like this, you want it to be as accurate as possible. So, my first piece of advice for improving the gyro's reliability is when you first power on your EV3 brick, set it down on the table, press the button to power it on, and don't touch it. Leave the EV3 brick stationary for the entire duration of the EV3 startup. And this is important to do because when you first turn on the EV3, that initial startup is when your gyro is initializing itself. It's going to um, do all kinds of initialization routines like resetting and recalibrating itself and calculate how much drift it should expect to get. And if you're moving the gyro around while it's doing this process, while the EV3 is starting up, you're not going to get any kind of reliability out of your gyro at all because it's, it needs to be set stationary. And if it's moving, when it thinks it's stationary, of course, how, how's it going to think it's stationary if it's moving? You're asking for all kinds of inaccuracy and drift and unreliability issues. So the first piece of advice is when you're turning your EV3 brick on, leave the EV3 brick and the attached gyro stationary until the EV3 brick completes its startup. My second piece of advice for improving the EV3 gyro's accuracy is don't ever hot plug the gyro. Now what hot plugging is, is when while the EV3 brick is running, you unplug the gyro sensor and then plug it back in again. And this can pretty much go for any sensor, but the gyro is especially crucial. Now I've been one of those whippersnappers in the past where I got impatient and I would unplug the gyro and plug it back in. I'm sure we've all done it. Um, just avoid doing it in the future because there's no way you can really uh, expect to get consistent results, especially when you're kind of rushing the sensor's initialization uh, with the EV3 running. And in addition, if you're plugging in a sensor uh, while the robot is running, you might shake the robot a little bit as it's being plugged in. And that goes back to my first point where the gyro needs to be completely stationary when it's first powered on. So definitely hot plugging, which is uh, unplugging and then plugging the gyro back in while the EV3 is running, is something you should avoid doing. My third piece of advice is to recalibrate your gyro sensor at the beginning of one of your programs. With the EV3 programming software open, I can now show you how to recalibrate your gyro. Now, I know it's tempting to think this gyro reset block, um, since it's named reset, recalibrates the gyro. But it's not. Just as it's named, the reset block resets the gyro. But there's a difference between recalibrating and resetting, and I'll explain what that is right now. When you reset a gyro, what you're doing, the only thing you're doing is taking whatever the current position is and setting that as the new zero position. So let's say the gyro is currently at 37 degrees. If you hit reset, that becomes the new zero degrees. However, it doesn't fix any problems you may be having with your gyro, like drift or general inaccuracy or unreliability, because it's not actually recalibrating the gyro, which is what we want to do here. So how do we recalibrate the gyro? I'll show you how to do that now. We're going to change this block to measure measuring angle and rate and we're going to take out two weight blocks after that we're going to set this first one to wait for half a second the second weight block we're going to set to gyro compare angle we want to make it equal to zero degrees and this is the code that you would run at the beginning of a program to recalibrate your gyro you only need to run this at the beginning of one of your programs unless you feel the need to do it for all of them and this will run about two or three seconds and afterwards your gyro will be recalibrated now how does it work why why do we do all of this um, the reasoning behind it is whenever the lego gyro switches modes like here we're switching it from angle to degrees per second or rate whenever it's switching modes that's when it recalibrates not when you issue that reset command so by switching modes here, we're causing it to recalibrate, and we're going to wait a little while now as it does that, 
And finally, what this does is it waits for the gyro's angle to become zero degrees. And the reasoning behind this is, as the gyro's recalibrating itself, it doesn't return a numerical value. It's, well, it's called not a number. And so we want to wait for the gyro to be complete, and we know it's complete when it returns zero degrees as its heading value. And that's what this has done. So that's basically how this all works. Now, one final thing, a disclaimer, is that I, claim, I cannot claim credit for discovering this. The first person that I saw to discover this trick was Carl4123, who's another Mindstormer in the community. Um, you can find him on the, the LEGO community. And he pointed this trick out, and I used it on my Kimosabi robot because he made a post about it. And I found it uh, decreased gyro drift. Most recently, I've seen team number 27, uh, Republic of Pi and their coach Patrick used this. This was actually part of the programming that they shared with me and allowed me to make tutorials on so I could share with you. So again, just to reiterate, I did not invent this um, piece of software. This is the uh, the workings of some other Mindstorms users, such as Carl4123 and Patrick from Team Republic of Pi. And of course, when you're calibrating your sensor using this code at the beginning of the program, rule number one that I mentioned before still applies. You want your robot to be stationary as it's recalibrating. Otherwise, as I mentioned before, it's going to mess up the calibration, and then your gyro is going to have a lot of reliability issues. So just keep that in mind. Keep the gyro stationary when this is running. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.